What up guys, Dylan again. So, I didn't even really think about it. Um, some of you guys know about my Tacoma, my personal friends, some of you don't. This is actually one of my favorite vehicles of everything I own. Um, I don't drive it much, just to, for whatever reason. Um, it's needed fuel injectors for quite some time. When it sits overnight or for a long period of time, one of the fuel injectors was bleeding off and uh, basically causing a cylinder to to flood while sitting and the cure of that was obviously new fuel injectors but the problem i ran into was deciding on which injectors to go with i was really contemplating going with uh, the urd kit with all six injectors um you know that whole kit it's about a thousand bucks the more research i did on that people were leaning towards seventh injector um, rather than that replacing whatever injectors were bad with Toyota. So what you already actually recommended to me was to take and basically to pull the injectors out, send them off to a reputable place, get them all tested, and then replace whichever ones were bad with some genuine Toyota ones. So I ended up not doing that either. Um, what I ended up doing, the brown ones here are the original ones, 220 something thousand miles now. Now these blue ones, I'll clean up some, but not much. They came out of a running engine. They are out of a, a I think about a 95, 96 non-turbo 2JZ Lexus. Um, I think they're 307 or 312 cc, so they're just a little bigger than the, the brown ones. So <clears throat> we're gonna go with that route as far as fixing um, the injector problem. Um, I would highly, 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 highly suggest if you guys do fuel injectors to replace all of the o-rings i'm not going to do it um i don't have the parts here and i'm stuck at home so i'm gonna you know obviously look closely at all the o-rings uh lube them up and put it together i decided while i have my supercharger off that i would replace the coupler with a little bit better one um, and i'm also well i've already ordered but i'm going to be putting a smaller pulley on it for more boost so I've also got a Walbro 255 fuel pump that's going to go in the truck um, to help with fueling. Once I get the injectors and the Walbro and stuff in, um, what I'll do is install a wide band and see where it's running and if it needs tuning from there. I'm not very hard on this truck. Again, this, this truck is literally my baby. I love this truck more than any vehicle I own and it is the last vehicle I would sell um, if I ever had to sell all my stuff. So just basically some of the stuff I've got I wanted to show you guys this is the coupler that came out of it it was a little loose um, and potentially could have been making it make a little bit of noise now one of the the places I've been in touch with on my other Toyota pickup that's 3RZ swapped and supercharged mentioned the the Dorman coupler um, it's a little thicker and it's supposed to be a little better than this style right here. So here's the part number, it's 917-022, with a dash in between. And it is, it's definitely a different design. So as you can see, it's actually, hopefully this catches it, it's a little thicker all the way around instead of just this part. Um, it's very similar thickness with including the, the parts that protrude out of it. Um, I haven't test fit it on here yet. Actually, we could probably try that. And they push on pretty good. So, and it looks like it is gonna, it is gonna go on there and fit pretty well. So I'm gonna replace that. Um, this is the silicone that they recommend for the nose cone on the superchargers. So we'll get this all cleaned up, get everything clean on both sides, put the new coupler in, reseal the front of it and fill it with some Redline 5W30 synthetic motor oil that I also have on the way. I went ahead, went ahead and ordered um, this big syringe to pump the fluid into the supercharger. Uh, I've done it with smaller ones and I honestly can't stand it. I mean, this is a large syringe, so I'll measure it out. I should be able to get most of it in there. Um, I am going to do the 170 degree thermostat, which TRD recommends. Everybody's had good luck with it. And uh, I'm also going to wire this. Um, it's a two wire volt meter basically and it's supposed to fit right in one of the empty spots in the Tacoma. Let me show you where. So don't mind the mess. I have not planned on videoing this truck. 
um, but I believe it fits down if you can see it how dark it is in one of these sections here and it just gives you a good actual voltage reading off of the truck um, which I think is awesome it's green which matches the color of the vehicle the truck whatever just a quick overview I had all my tools and everything over at um, the other shop you've well you will see in the short bed build um, everything's here now I've not had time to organize but basically it's a 2002 Tacoma double cab I've got SPC control arms and King mid travels as well as some all pro expedition leaf springs in the rear with uh, some big old two and a half inch King reservoir shocks in the back like I said I I really don't use this truck a lot it's just kind of here it's my baby I want to keep it nice I just barely got done putting this engine back in um, I pulled it out and did a complete reseal top to bottom new torque converter new timing belt kit all with genuine Toyota stuff um, and uh, didn't have time to do the injectors then which I should have done but I did not so after I get the intake manifold cleaned up and the injectors back in I'll pop another video together for you um, I ordered a stand for the camera as well so that I can do some of the filming of putting stuff together tearing it apart and all that stuff so I'll try and catch some of it see if I can set the camera up somewhere and get you guys a good view but I think for tonight what I will end up doing is just getting the injector squared away and the fuel rail back in. I if I if I do get this sealed up and put in, I could put the supercharger back on as well. And this is the I did not actually have one of these um, strap wrench sets. I'm gonna try and use that to hold the pulley on the supercharger to break that nut loose when it's bolted back up. Oh, and I am going to be doing the deck plate mod as well, which goes up in the front of the air clean or air filter box. Um, it just allows it to breathe a little better on the road and stuff like that. I don't know how much they work or how much they don't. Um, I did also order the air aid intake tube as well to get rid of the, the cracked OEM one, which is right here. It was cracked and siliconed up at the top, which is definitely not good. So I will get I will keep you guys kind of uh, in touch with this Tacoma build. Um, all my tools are not organized. Everything's kind of crazy, but just trying to get some some stuff done while I'm stuck at home. Okay guys, so I got all the fuel injectors in, I cleaned all the O-rings, cleaned the top and bottom of them, uh, vacuumed the holes out. Now a lot of you guys are going to say, oh my gosh, he's putting used fuel injectors in his truck. So the majority of people are replacing fuel injectors or buying eBay fuel injectors that are refurbished, which they basically do the same thing. They pull them out of another motor or they get cores in and they test them um, and whatever one's passed, they clean up and throw in a box. Um, the chances of having aftermarket or Chinese injectors being better than a used set of known good, genuine Japanese fuel injectors is not comparable. I would much rather take my chances with buying fuel injectors from a friend of mine who knows they're good, um, that are all Japanese that came in that 2JZ to begin with. That's why I choose to um, go this route. So we're gonna see if we can't get this uh, fuel rail stuffed back in here. It's going to be kind of tricky to get past all this stuff, but... Obviously removal of these is the exact opposite of what I'm doing here. Um, 
wish I would have got that for you guys, but I just wasn't thinking about it. I had a chance to pull this thing in and get it torn apart, so I took it. It's a 12 millimeter bolt, or you should use a 12 millimeter socket rather. Just a little bit. Make sure my plugs are clear. I like to move the injectors back and forth just a little bit. Make sure they're seated and they're free in their hole where they need to be. I don't know the torque spec to this. I've done so many of them. I don't use a torque spec. I suggest you look it up. Quarter drive. Now they're going to be in there pretty tight once you get that done. So you want to make sure they're pointed where they need to be. Now these are direct clip-in injectors, that's why I chose these over some of the other options. Don't want to forget the injector return line. None of this stuff is fun to get to. Perfect. Now this is not fun either. Between the harness at the back, do not drop these washers. Or you're running to Toyota for sure. Get it started in this side. Doesn't have much room to move around. If you can see that, that's about it. So now the key is getting the harness back enough. Of course it's going to be a pain in the butt to get back in because it also has its own bracket that can bend slightly. So we're going to remove Actually, I'm probably not going to remove it. I'm just going to loosen it. There's a 10 that holds that line. Just gonna loosen it up. What's this one here? See, and just that was enough to get that in there. You want to tighten this by hand every single time, and make sure your washer's still in there because it's not fun to get to after the fact. My washer's still in there. Do not cross thread that, or again, you'll be looking for parts. Now, you got to be pretty gentle because the whole rail moves. Twist it. So there's, there's that. The fuel injectors are in. Um, from here, it's uh, it's just a little more assembly. Don't forget to tighten up the bracket for the high pressure line. Back and all six in there good everything else is sitting where it needs to and uh, we're ready to put the supercharger back on the top Okay, so just so you guys know, you don't need a ton on this. 
Um, they came with very, very little from the factory. Um, make sure it's very, very clean. Um, as you can see, it's using three of the six holes, so it's pretty simple from here. Now that both sides are clean, you're going to put this the correct way, which is that way, and you're going to, see if I can get this, line the other three holes up and kind of just push it together. I'm not going to be able to do that with one hand, I don't think. Nope, I'm not. So... Let's see, let's set this back up. It doesn't look like we messed any silicone up. Let's pull that little piece out. So again, just like I was showing you, line the three holes up. And there's some dowels in here. Once I get this started, I'll show you those as well very tight fit the studs fit really really good now there's some dowels right there that line the housing up so you can't you really can't mess it up so we're just gonna kind of wiggle it together from there I wish actually I do have a little rubber mallet Gently, gently, gently. Evenly, there's three of them. Now, when I bought this, truck it was completely stock no supercharger no lift no nothing and i bought the supercharger used i have no idea uh, how old this oil was that's in it um, it looked really good when i bought it i believe there's there's two bolts that are longer than the other ones i believe they went here and here so top left and um top far right uh Sorry about that. From there, it's just it's just assemble and it's 25 foot pounds. Okay, so I time-lapsed everything through here. Um, there is a torque spec for these. I don't use them. I've had the supercharger off multiple times. I've done multiple superchargers. Um, if you don't have a close range of what you think it should be, I would look the spec up. Uh, there's two coolant hoses for the throttle body in the bottom. Uh, there's two electrical connectors, and there is an EVAP hose that goes into the back. Um, that's pretty much it for this side. Now there's the long, 10, uh, 10 millimeter head here, and then two 12s that are bolts, and then a nut on the front and back. And I'm trying to keep this video as short as I can for you. Because it's not just one thing uh, getting done in here. I can't really walk you guys through, take an hour. They don't need to be over tightened at all. Sometimes I'll do the outers and then that last center one just to pull it back down that way. Okay, so I have to excuse my magnet mount coming undone here. Now on this side, I'm going to have my, my brace bolt here, a brace bolt there, and then I'm just got... I'm going to have a few vacuum lines, the retaining, there's two 10 millimeters here, 
if you can see those uh, that hold the injector return lines there's a ground um, throttle cable kick down cable for the trans which is this one and then there's this cruise control cable and there's a plastic um, bracket on the back that's a 10 millimeter bolt as well that retains the wiring harness to the back of it um, so that's all pretty pretty easy stuff I mean you guys are at this point you're already going back together so you've already done that stuff um, but you can refer to this as removal just backwards process from where I'm at um, I'll come back in a few minutes when everything's buttoned up Okay, so that pretty much wraps the supercharger up. I have the air aid intake piece coming. Um, I am going to hook this up. Um, I don't know if you guys could see the way it is. I just wrapped that up. There is a little peg. See that on the cable? It needs to sit flush with the end of that. Um, that's where the kick down is supposed to be at. So I've got that set about right. Um, I've got it to where the throttle, the throttle cable there is pretty tight, but it's not holding it back at all to raise idle. That I'll just wrap around, hook that through, and um, adjust it accordingly as well, just so there's not much slack. And uh, that pretty much sums up putting the supercharger back on, other than the belt, but again, I am waiting on a smaller pulley. Um, I do believe I'm gonna create a separate video for changing the supercharger pulley as well, as well as the deck plate mod. So that's it for putting that back together. I'm gonna do the lightweight crank pulley, the smaller pulley on the supercharger, the thermostat, and a few other things as well.